Let's talk about your daily routine. Can you tell me about your daily routine? When I first get up, I don't like doing anything um, high maintenance or too quick. I like to take my time. Um, once I wake up, I like to just be on my phone and then gradually get on from there. Get up and do my skincare. I start getting dressed and then go downstairs. I make some coffee or tea, even matcha. I love matcha. <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of my morning routine. Has your routine changed since you were a child? So growing up, I didn't really have a routine because when you're a child, you just <laughs> do whatever. But growing up, I came to realize that it's important to have like a set um, routine on what to do and how to take care of yourself, how to maintain a better routine throughout the day. So yeah, my routine has drastically changed throughout um, my life. Is there anything you would like to add to your daily routine? I would like to incorporate uh, more of like meditation to just be able to ground myself um, when needed. I haven't been able to do that as of recently, but I would like to incorporate that in my routine because I think it's important to just be able to um, have that minute to yourself and just feel grounded. Let's talk about flowers. Have you ever received flowers as a gift? Yes, I have. Um, actually, recently I did receive flowers and I can't talk enough about flowers. I love everything about them, like the variations that you find, the different types and colors as simple as like roses to, let's say, tulips. I love everything about them. On what special occasions do people give flowers in your country? Uh, from where I'm from, they usually use flowers for, say, birthdays or uh, weddings. And flowers are just uh, common to receive, especially here with my friends. We usually like gift each other flowers for uh, each other's birthdays or even just like a normal, like a thank you, like just to show appreciation to a person. What kind of flowers would you like to receive as a present? So I've never received uh, sunflowers. And when I was a kid, I just looking at sunflowers, I was always amazed by how they look. And I would want to like touch one because I've never like seen how it looks like in real life. I've only seen it through pictures. So I would like to receive um, sunflowers. Now let's talk about food. Do you enjoy cooking? I don't personally cook for myself just because I wasn't really into um, cooking. I do, however, like baking. I like to bake desserts. I like to make, um, let's say, cake, a chocolate cake or cookies. Whenever I feel bored at home and there's literally nothing to do, I find myself grabbing the ingredients in the cupboards or just baking. <laughs> it's really fun and just the hard work that I put into it versus the aftermath, I feel like it's worth it. <laughs> do you think that you have a healthy diet? Personally, I don't think that I have a healthy diet. I usually eat whatever is available. I try to be mindful of what I put into my body, especially because how I see people um, develop some issues with uh, the food that they take. And especially because as I'm growing older, my metabolism is going to be different. So I try to be aware, but usually my diet isn't that great. How often do you order food online? I usually order, I would say about two to three times a week. Um, other than that, I would just eat at home. I would actually very much prefer um, homemade food rather than ordering online. When there's nothing to eat at home, I tend to gravitate towards uh, ordering through the app, um, fast food. Now let's talk about movies. What are the advantages of seeing a movie in the cinema? I would say the advantages of seeing a movie in a cinema would be that you get to watch it as soon as it comes out. You get to watch it in a bigger screen. 
instead of just staying at home and watching it through your laptop or TV. I don't think there's a lot of advantages in my opinion, but I really like the the experience. Uh, let's say if you're watching it in terms of like um, uh, I'm through IMAX, that experience is really nice um, because of how the sound system is. It's it's a really nice experience. Uh, Do you like watching movies alone or with other people? So when it's like a like an indie film, I like to watch it alone because I feel like that's not everyone's cup of tea. But with psychological thrillers or horror movies especially, I love watching it with other people because I cannot stand watching it alone. I get really scared when it's horror films. So having a company with you, it's it's much better. So last year, my mom, who usually prepares the meals at home, she uh, was away for vacation. So I was in charge of uh, cooking the food at home. I learned to prepare this meal, which was pasta arabiata. It's very simple to some people, but from a um, perspective where I've never really cooked anything at home, it was like a big step for me. I learned this uh, recipe online. Like I just skimmed through a random website and um, I started following the recipe. And I actually had a bit of help from my cousin. Um, I The reason why I chose this um, food to prepare um, was because my dad really enjoys uh, pasta arabiata. He wouldn't eat any other type of pasta except that <laughs> for some reason. It doesn't have any like uh, meat. It's just literally pasta and sauce. <laughs> and it was pretty quick. Like when I started uh, preparing it, uh, it didn't take me that long, which I liked because I hate spending hours in the kitchen just waiting to cook uh, me to eat something. I think that takes the fun out of cooking because <laughs> I just want it quick. The part that I liked about uh, the meal that I prepared was uh, that it was quick, but also at the same time, it was uh, it was very delicious. Like I added um, organic uh, tomato. I used not like the canned um, uh, sauce. I made it from scratch. So that's what I enjoyed about it. So we've been talking about food and we're going to continue to talk about cooking and working in the food industry. Do you think it's important for children to learn how to cook? To thank you for watching this video, I want to give you a free course that has helped thousands of students improve their IELTS speaking score. What it's going to do is take you through every single part of the test and give you strategies for part one, part two, and part three, and also allow you to practice at home for free and get feedback. To sign up for that for free, all you have to do is just click the link in the description. Thanks very much, and let's get back to the video. So I love the idea where kids grow up in a household where they learn how to cook. Personally, I've never, I, I was never taught how to cook properly, just to prepare like random dishes, small dishes, like, oh, putting the, the cheese <laughs> on the plate. Because in um, Arab cuisines, you will find like these tiny dishes spread out, like uh, cold mezza. So it's just like tiny appetizers. And that's how I learned to prepare uh, the breakfast table. But um, I would personally teach my kids how to cook if I <laughs> learned it myself, because I feel like learning that from a young age could benefit uh, for their uh, future. Do you think that high school children should learn to cook at home or at school? I never heard anyone cooking at school honestly, but um, I think at home would be much preferable because you have everything there. The ingredients, it's already in the kitchen. And especially because, let's say, a parent could help guide you on what to use, what not to use, what to stay away from and what goes with what. So you can test out what is suitable for your liking. Now let's talk about working as a chef. Do you think it would be enjoyable to work as a professional chef? From my knowledge, I've only seen professional chefs uh, 
let's say in cooking shows or in um, Hell's Kitchen. So I think it's very um, v- a very tiring job, especially because if you have like, let's say, 20 people coming in at the same time ordering different meals, it's going to be a very tough job or um, tough on you to be a professional chef, trying to keep up with different um, meals. What if you mess up? Like, you never know. Um, so, yeah, it's, I don't think it's an easy job. How much influence do celebrity chefs have on what ordinary people cook? To thank you for making it this far in the video, I want to give you 10% off our VIP course. The IELTS VIP course is the most successful IELTS course in the world. That is a fact because we have more band seven, eight, and nine success stories than any other IELTS course in the entire world. We do that by simplifying the whole IELTS process, supporting you with some of the best IELTS teachers in the world, and being with you every step of the way until you get the score that you need. All you have to do is just look down in the description, just click that, and you can sign up. If you have any questions about the VIP course, always feel free to get in touch with us. We answer 100% of the questions that we get. Hope that you have become a VIP. If not, enjoy the rest of this free video. So the influence uh, that celebrities, celebrity chefs have on ordinary people, I believe is uh, great because of how, how they add their personal touch into a dish. Gordon Ramsay, I know that he is known for his filet mignon, I think. Um, and the way he prepares it, he wants it to be perfect. And I think that like not everyone can achieve that at home, but learning th- through what he does can, um, can make them very intrigued to make this dish. That's the end of the speaking test. Well done. Thank you so much.